Okay, so um, got some data here, but it looks like ultimately what we're trying to find is we're trying to find, evaluate negative 5 at h, his derivative. So here h is defined as a ratio of these two functions. So what we got to do is we have to use the, we have to find the derivative. And what it would mean is um, taking the derivative of the first but not the second, we need the product rule. Okay. We can just write it like that. Excuse me. So what we're going to do here is negative 5, but notice that in every instance there's a negative 5 that was plugged in. That is absolutely necessary or else we would not have enough information. So at h prime of negative 5, um, we take the derivative of the first, but not the second. That's 1 minus, not the derivative of the first, which is zero, so I actually don't even care what I write here, but technically it is negative one-fifth, all over whatever g, that's one, so the output is one squared. So it looks like we get negative ten, uh, divide, that's it. Negative ten is the answer divided by one squared. So our answer is c. Here we're going to find the equation. Okay, now these guys are, sometimes what happens is they don't put it in the form that you like. So we might have to do some finagling here. So we'll see what happens. But what we need for an equation of a tangent line is we need the slope and then we need a point. Now they gave us the point, clearly. So what we need is the slope. And so we find the slope by taking the derivative. Okay, and the derivative would be the derivative of tangent. Okay, and that is secant squared. Okay, so I want it at this point. Now the one is the is the output of the original function. What is the output of the derivative? So I have to plug in pi over four. So I've got to figure out what um, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this by hand. So secant is actually cosine. Okay, and it's one over. So I want pi over four, one over cosine squared of pi over 4. Now, cosine is a radical 2 over 2, and i got to square that guy. So that gives me 1 over um, a 2 gets broken free, but then that's a 4. So now that ends up being 2. So uh, the slope is 2. So what does that look like? It looks like the line will be um, y minus 1 equals um, 2 times x minus pi over 4. Now, unfortunately, I don't see any of that. Um, I definitely don't see a square root of 2, though, so I think I can get rid of that guy. But what it looks like I'm going to have to do here is... I want to distribute and see if I can move these guys around. Um, so y equals, or y minus 1 equals 2x minus pi over 2. Now I don't see any fractions here, so I'm going to multiply everything by 2. So 2y minus 2 equals 4x minus pi. Now that's getting us somewhere. Um, looks like if we were to move okay okay i think i see this guy right here because if i swap this guy over here if i move the negative pi over to the other side i would have pi minus two and if i move that two y over here i'd have four x minus two y and that's actually exactly what i got there Okay, by the transitive property, I can just move those two guys around, and it's B, so tricky. Um, here, we're going to find the limit. Okay, now when I plug in direct substitution, always try it first. If I plug in direct substitution, I will get a zero, so I've got some tricks here. And the first trick is to make sure that I uh, um, factor as much as possible. This guy, the X method, I get 
plus 7, and then plus 4. Now, luckily, that means that I can cross these out, okay, which means there's a hole there at negative 4. So as I approach negative 4, it would basically look like it would approach 3, because then I can do direct substitution with this guy. So the answer is 3. Even though there's a hole, the limit actually exists. Now, this guy here, what I'm trying to do is, um, I don't even know what this original function is. I believe it's x to the third, so it should be this guy. But I can't take any chances. What I am going to do is foil that out. Um, so uh, let's go, it would be the limit uh, of h going to zero. It's x to the third um, plus 3x squared h plus 3xh squared uh, plus h to the third minus x to the third all over h. I need to cross that out. Um, this is the binomial expansion that we practiced. We took a side step. So remember the 1, 3, 3, 1, all right, from the triangle numbers here. And then we descend degrees. And then the h actually ascends degrees. So these guys cancel out. And then that way you can take an h out of each one of those and you end up with this. Okay, but if you're sending each of those h's to zero, you'll notice that these guys go to zero, and you will be left with 3x squared. Okay, now, again, another limit. This guy is actually, um, would give us zero, but if we know how to factor this, we know that this is x minus 2, and then this is the difference of two cubes. So, to factor this, We've got x squared plus 2x uh, plus 4. Okay, now you just had to remember those rules. This is the difference of two cubes. You should have that memorized by now. Hopefully you have it memorized. These guys will go away because remember we are taking the limit as 2. And if I plugged it in, I would be dividing by 0. But not anymore. Now when I plug in 2... I get uh, 4 plus 4 plus 4, that's 12. Okay, great. All right, now this guy is kind of annoying <laughs> because it's that darn absolute value function. Now we know that it's 1, but we've got two different versions of this guy, okay? If I have a number that is large, uh, large. If, if I plugged in a negative 7, okay, then what would happen is I would get a 0 over 0. So that can't happen. If I plugged in a negative 8, okay, what would happen is, is that this guy would become negative and this guy would automatically go positive. So the thing here is that negative 7 is kind of the boundary here. That's one, that's negative one. All right, so this is a straight constant line, by the way. Okay, now you can test this. Okay, let's plug in a number. How about negative 10? Negative 10, you get negative three, divided by uh, the, the absolute value of negative three would give us negative one. So either way, you're gonna get one each time. The question is, are you gonna get negative one or are you gonna get a positive? Now, if these numbers are larger than negative seven, then we're always going to get positive, uh, positive 1 as our output, but over here we'll get negative. So when in doubt, make a table. If this is confusing, make a table so that you can see that you're always going to get 1 or negative 1. Okay, so just make sure. Now, this does say, though, we are coming from the right. If we come from the right, um, I'm sorry, the left. No, I'm sorry, coming from the right. We are coming from the right. I was totally right the first time. If I'm coming from the right, that's going to be a positive 1. Okay, if I came from the left, if that was negative 7, and then we saw a little negative sign, then we would have chosen negative 1. Okay. All right, uh, where are we at? Nine-minute mark, I will stop there.